I will be making pork chow mein Chinese style. Uh, last time I made this, I made it Hungarian style because I couldn't find all the ingredients, but I have them now. What I'm doing right now is soaking the shiitake mushrooms, so I'm getting ready, and then I will, uh, um, and then I will work on assembling the rest of the ingredients. Uh, I will have this recipe at my website. Okay, I'm gonna be. Uh, I have enough pork here for two sir, for two recipes. What I'm gonna do is slice it thin and freeze the other half for later. Also boiling some Chinese noodles. Um, I, I can only find these at Walmart around here. You can also get them at Target. Um, I'm going to be boiling the whole bag and getting that ready for this recipe. But right now, uh, let me just show you the, uh, yeah, let's get the pork. There's, it's 1.25 pounds here. Um, this recipe calls for a half a pound of thinly sliced pork and so what I'm going to do here is um, thinly slice all of this and then freeze half of it for later. Yeah, I have learned from experience that um, it's better not to make a whole bunch of this unless you have a big family to feed because Leftovers, it only stays fresh for so long, so it's better just to make a fresh batch later and freeze the meat um, as you need it, you know, and then take it out as you need it. So what I'm going to be doing here is uh, cutting it very thin, because that thinner, thin cut meat does better. And it's also good if you can cut it partially frozen. It's easier to cut the meat thin if you cut it when it's partially frozen. It's kind of like partially frozen. I took it out yesterday and thawed it out in the refrigerator. So, uh, so what I'm going to be doing is cutting enough for two recipes. Kind of like, let me see, let's go about right there. Thin. Thinly sliced. Does better with stir fry. And I think you can yeah, so let me just go ahead and cut this uh, up, cut off the whole thing up like you, like you see me doing, and uh, then I will, I'm going to put back in the freezer half of this for later for another recipe. Okay, so we'll go ahead and work on that. Okay, you can see I'm making progress on this. That, those are actually organic shiitake mushrooms. That's what they had at the Asian store. Um, I usually like to use the, the water that it soaks into. <laughs> uh, uh, gives the, all my Asian recipes a nice flavor. I don't know how much you can see of that, but um, I'm going to be throwing in the whole, they call it chuka soba, chow mein stir fry noodles. Probably don't have enough water, but um, let's see here. I'm going to move this over this way just a bit. There we go. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> Let me get, um, okay, I'm going to put it back over here. I just didn't want to make a mess. Okay, it's underneath the water, so, um, I'm going to cook it for until it's just cooked. You do not want to overcook any noodles that you use in a, it's a you know, like with Italian cuisine, you want al dente. Well, yeah, they, this is like the Asian version of al dente. So I'll just cook it until it's just done, and then I'm going to drain it. Even though it didn't come to a full boil, the noodles are cooking, and uh, that's enough. I'm going to pull them out right now. Uh, let's go ahead and drain them. I would say they, they were in there for about four minutes. Uh, actually, three minutes would have been better if it was a full boil. So I'm going to go ahead and pull them out and drain them. I'm actually going to rinse some cold water through it to stop the cooking process because I think I don't like mushy noodles, okay? Never had much luck with this step. <laughs> but let's try it again. Um, 
Now I'm going to brown the noodles in some oil. This is canola oil. It's like a couple. I'd say about a tablespoon of canola oil. This pan usually does better with browning, so I'm using this one. And I'm going to throw the noodles in here and um, try to get it to brown. I, I cook with cast iron because I'm not crazy about Teflon. You know, maybe it's this idiosyncrasy that I have, you know. <laughs> so. What I usually do is I just kind of coat it evenly on the uh, bottom and wait for it to brown. In the meanwhile, I'll be preparing some of the other ingredients. I guess it's kind of medium-high heat would probably be the best. This is preparing the noodles for the stir-fry. So let's just leave that in there for right now. I don't know why it is, but Chinese noodles do not brown easily. <laughs> Let's just leave it here. I just checked. They aren't browning yet. So we're going to leave it here a little bit longer. It's possible I'm not using enough oil, but let's just leave it a little bit longer. What I've done in the past is just went ahead and made them without them being browned as much as in the picture in the cookbook. Here's the half of the uh, pork that I'm going to freeze. <laughs> I got the other half over there ready, so that'll be for another day when I make this recipe. Let's see how the uh, browning is coming along. Hey, I can live with that. We're going to flip it. Okay, we're going to get the other side brown. I have it on about medium-high heat. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not too bad. Eh? You just have to let it sit there for a while. Um... I choose this pan because it's almost like Teflon and that it, uh, I'm trying to get this one to flip through. Okay, that's good. We're going to let it, uh, sit there a little while and brown the other half. Good. It needs to be there for like seven minutes on about medium-high heat. That's what, that's what one side looks like. I think once it gets hot enough, yeah, it's, uh, I don't want to burn it either. So let's go ahead. I think this is good enough. Yeah. I've noticed this dough tends to get really hot, so maybe that helps. Let's go ahead and take it off. This is good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, that's good enough for me. Let me go ahead and take it off. And uh, I'm going to just store it on a... Plate. Plate. While I would prepare the other ingredients. That's good enough. So I cook them and then prep them. These are Chinese noodles. So. And I couldn't find them in my area. They only had them at Target and they didn't even have them at the Asian store. <laughs> so I don't exactly live on the west coast of the United States, so I have to kind of like shop around to get all my ingredients. So let me just go ahead and take this off while I now work. I'm going to lay this aside while I work on prepping the rest of the ingredients. The recipe calls for one fourth cup of bamboo shoots and water chestnuts, but I don't like to waste food, so I may not follow it exactly. But I am going to, uh, though you can preserve these if you save them in water and change the water every day, um, which is what I do with my bean sprouts. But I think I'm going to do half-half, uh, so, so uh, I'll just do like half of that, half of this. So I'm going to do it a little, I'll use a little bit more than the recipe calls for. <laughs> It'll probably still be good. So let me, uh, so I opened the cans of these, 
and got them ready. And um, the next thing I had to do is prepare the snow peas and stuff. These snow peas are washed and ready to eat. But I learned from my mother, who is de who was dead, actually she's in heaven right now, that you better test them out and make sure they're not stringy. They actually they look pretty fresh. When they get old, they get stringy. Uh, you can kind of like tell when you go like this. She usually would go to the, you know what, these look pretty good. You see that stream right there? She usually would take those off. It's usually the older ones. I think the worst that can happen is you'll have to take it off when you eat it. The older ones usually have it. So, I, so sometimes I will pre-string them. See that right there? Actually, these don't look bad. This one looks like it might be stringy. You just kind of like... And this makes for a better eating experience if you take this. See what I see? What I mean? <laughs> so I usually take the strings off to um, to so that it's t the the ones that are um, kind of soft. You probably don't have to worry about the harder ones are probably the ones that have the strings. Yes, yeah, see what I mean? So you take the, I take those out. I learned this from my mother. Yeah. Yeah, I see there's some strings on that one. Just take the strings off. Makes for a better eating experience. You don't have to worry about stringy peas. These are snow peas, you know. So. Other than that, you can just throw, throw them in the stir fry as is. Uh-oh. Am I about to lose power? Uh-oh. Looks like I lost power, but my, my camera's running my battery, so... <laughs> well, let's see. I'm going to have fun cooking today, hey? Sorry about this, folks. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know what? I need to turn some lights on. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, we've, yeah, it's kind of windy out there, so. Looks like my, the Antichrist Lizzo is not too happy that I'm doing this, eh? <laughs> this is enough snow peas for, definitely for two recipes at least. But so I'm, this, I'm actually prepping for, um, for more than one, you know, I'm going to be making this twice. <laughs> I have a lot of other stuff I gotta cook too, like I bought some cilantro, but yeah, I, whenever I use snow peas, I always try to prep them like this. Makes for a less stringy eating experience. Let me go ahead and finish this. Okay, there's the pile of strings. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I don't have to get them all out, but I try to get most of them out. That's it's, Usually if they feel kind of rough, that means they, they're pretty stringy. I'm only gonna use about half of these because I'm going to save the rest to make some more uh, some other day. Oops, excuse me. So, Asians cut their stir-fried vegetables diagonal. I just washed the celery. Uh, these were, I bought celery sticks. So this is, a, they say, one stock celery slay, so this is about right. Let me, let me just get the ends off because they're kind of nasty looking here. And then I'm going to do diagonal slices. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and get and then and then I put I'm putting each of the vegetables in a separate container because some of them I'll have to do a little bit, bit of chopping when I make this second time around, but for tonight, you know any ingredients that where I have a whole bunch of them and I want to prepare them for this. I'm doing so let me just go ahead and uh Get the celery ready. The recipe calls for one small onion sliced. So let's go ahead and uh, work on that. Yeah, I reset my clocks and turned my computer back on because we had a power outage. Hopefully we won't have any more. <laughs> Very windy today. Oops, don't roll away from me. Let's make sure. The camera runs on battery, so <laughs> a little different situation here. All right. Let's 
take the skin off. got to have onions in this recipe. It makes the dish, along with all the other ingredients. Yeah, I tried making it without the the, uh, the way the recipe calls for it. It just doesn't taste good. Yeah, I have to make it with the, uh, you know, with the same way the Chinese do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's hard for me to get uh, Asian ingredients around here, so I have to be... I tried making Hungarian goulash style chow mein, but it just doesn't taste like the Chinese version, which I like better, I think. All right, let's go ahead and take this off. Now I'm going to slice it. I do have some onions that are frozen and chopped, but this recipe actually calls for sliced onions. Now the bamboo shoots I'm using are not quite like in the picture, but um, you know, it's kind of hard to get whole bamboo shoots around here. So, all right. I usually take these ends off right here. Just want to get them sliced and then I'm going to put them in here with a cover so my eyes don't burn out. All right. Let's go like this. See, this is sliced. Kind of like that. And then they'll fall apart nicely when you start stir frying. I don't want that skin. So let's just go ahead and uh, I think after this I'll be ready to start cooking. Don't want to cut my fingers. I've been very accident prone lately. All right. Here's what the sliced onions look like. And now let's go ahead and prepare everything else. You can see I have everything laid out here on this counter next to the stove, except I have the pork in the refrigerator because I wanted to keep that meat refrigerated as long as possible. And what I'm going to do now is prepare the cornstarch and water mixture. I happen to love the flavor of shiitake mushrooms, so I'm going to make the cornstarch and water mi mixture using the water that I use to soak the mushrooms. Okay, the, since it looks like I'm not quite following the recipe, the recipe says to have one tablespoon of cornstarch to uh, two tablespoons of water. I'm going to go do a little bit more simply because uh, it looks like I'm going to be using a little bit more vegetables than what the recipe calls for. This way I can make sure we have a nice thickening sauce at the end. Let's throw in some of the mushroom water. This is a trick I learned from my mother. <laughs> I love the flavor of, um, I think I'm gonna throw a little bit. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and uh, kind of whisk this around here. This is for later, I'm gonna throw this in. I, I like to get everything prepared ahead of time so that when I cook, I, all I can do is focus on cooking. Yeah, so I just throw everything in. Um, I am going to be modifying, though. Like, I will use all these bean sprouts. I have another batch of bean sprouts that I'm storing in fresh water for later. I will be using half of the bamboo shoots, half of this. Actually, I'm not quite following the recipe. All of the onions and half of the... Uh, water chestnuts and all of the mushrooms. Uh, let's go ahead and throw out the rest of the water. Let me. I, it also helps to read your recipe through before you start cooking so you know pretty much know what you're doing when you get in there. Okay. Let's throw out the rest of the water now. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's good. This is the there's something about that mushroom water, though. It really does taste delicious. Oops. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, the green onions are in the freezer. I actually froze them. We're going to go ahead and start cooking.
That pan is heating up. I gotta make me one cup of soup stock. Soup stock so that'll be three fourths teaspoon of this to uh, one cup. So let's go ahead and make get that ready. There is the chicken stock, uh, and I'll have I'll throw that in at the appropriate time. Here's some canola oil in here, and I'll be cooking the pork. This is my wok. It's a 12-inch cast iron skillet. <laughs> Yeah, I have limited space where I live, so I have to make use of what I have, you know, kind of creative. Like instead of a rice cooker, I just use a stainless steel pressure cooker. I've learned how to make rice with it. Okay, let's go ahead and stir fry this. And pretty high heat there. Yeah. Okay, so now we will. Um, Stir fry the meat on high heat until it's no longer pink. Let's go ahead and try cooking meat in this thing continually. Okay. Okay, that's good enough. All right, now add all other ingredients except green onions and cornstarch mixture. Okay, let's throw in all of the onions. Okay. All of the forest or shiitake mushrooms. And I'm going to be putting in half of the water chestnut because we're going to save this for later. So I'm just kind of guesstimating here. That's good. Um, half of the bamboo shoots. That's good. Okay, and. Um, all of the celery, because this is the equivalent of one stalk of celery. And all of the bean sprouts. It's the recipe calls for a cup of bean sprouts. This is about a cup. It's about half of the bean sprouts that I got at Publix. My ingredients are from all over town, though, because I have to go all over town to get everything. <laughs> all right, um, those were fresh when I bought them. Um, and I'm going to put in half of the pea pods. That's good. Yeah, that's okay. All right, and um, and I forgot to get the mirror ready, but I, I have the oh, the mirror's in the refrigerator. Okay, let's get the mirror in. Okay, that would be one tablespoon of mirin. skip on the salt because I usually find Asian recipes use way more salt than I like. So I'm going to skip the salt. Uh, let's go ahead and put in the soup stock. We'll see my, there's a lot of salt already in this soup stock so yeah. I'm going to skip on the salt. Okay, all right, let's see here. Okay, we're good. So we've got to cover and bring to full boil, allowing to steam for one minute. Let me kind of like mix it around. Definitely need a wok for this or a 12 inch skillet. This will work too. Wok would be better, but you know, that way it wouldn't have to worry about stuff going over the side. So let's go ahead and kind of like spread everything around. 
but what about the noodles? Oh, the noodles go in later. Okay. Okay, the noodles go in last. All right, let's just go ahead and spread this around. Yeah, you want to have it on pretty high heat too. Okay, we're going to go ahead and let it steam. Let's go ahead and cover it for one minute. Okay. I'm going to be adding water to this to store it in the refrigerator. Yeah, whenever you want to store these in water and change your water every day. The same with the water chestnuts. I'll be adding water to this and put it in the refrigerator. Okay, that's about right. You don't want to overcook the vegetables. A little bit of crispness makes it better. Um, okay, so we got one, you, so you allow it to steam about one minute. Now we toss in the green onions, uh, so that would be, let's see, one green onion. I've got, I have frozen green onions uh, that I already, I just, my mother taught me that you can save green onions by freezing them and storing them in the freezer. So I'm not exactly following, I'll throw in about the equivalent of what would be one green onion. Green onions don't last very long, so I like to freeze them. Yeah, that's about one. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and throw in the uh, cornstarch mixture. Put this back in the freezer right away. The only thing is, once you freeze those green onions, they need to stay in the freezer until you use them. Okay, we're going to go ahead and throw this in here. That's to thicken it. And as you know, I put in a little bit of the shiitake mushroom water in there because I love the flavor. All right. Um, and sir, and now let's go ahead and thicken it. Yep, it's thickening quite nicely. I will have this recipe underneath the, um, actually it looks like it's going to be good. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and, uh, all right, the next thing you add in is you add noodles and toss to combine and then we are done. Uh, I always end up making a mess. <laughs> so let's go kind of slow. It's not salty enough, you can always add salt. I prefer to under salt than over salt. That's the problem, is easily solved by just using the salt shaker. Asian recipes tend to have a little bit more salt than I like. So I usually uh, cut back on the salt. Okay. This looks good. <laughs> Okay, let me 
go ahead and turn the heat off. I can tell. But I usually just turn the heat off and let it keep cooking. I'm using an electric stove. Okay, and I will taste it and let you know my verdict. I've made this before, so uh, and I liked it before when I made it. But before, you know, I lived on the West Coast and it was easy to get all the ingredients. So I did manage to get all the ingredients, but I had to go all over town. <laughs> yeah, no one store had everything I needed, not even the Asian store. Okay, so I had to get the noodles at Target and Walmart. All right, let's go ahead and try it. Uh, let me get a close-up on that. Hold on. So that's what it looks like. Looks delicious, huh? All righty. I'll give you my verdict. Still a little hot. It looks good though. Mmm, it's good. I really like it. Delicious. Mmm. It paid to go all over town to get the right ingredients. This tastes really Chinese. And I like it that it's just slightly salty. Mmm. Good. Mmm. <laughs> Um, I will be posting this at my website so you all can uh, have the recipe. Mm. It might need a tad more salt, but you know, that's that, like I said, I'd rather undersalt it than oversalt it. You all can adjust it according to your preference. I tend to like less salt. Ah, let's see here. <laughs> 